Today is the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. Our theme is taken from the Responsorial Psalm which says, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. It is the will of God that Samuel responded to in the first reading when he said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. This will of God can only be discovered when we draw closer to God as we read in the Gospel. As many as came close to Jesus, they discovered that he was indeed the Messiah. The second reading reveals the divine will concerning our physical bodies. Our bodies are not instruments to sin but parts of Christ's body. That is, God's ultimate will is that we stay united with Christ as members of his own body. The first reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 3 to 10 and verse 19. It is the story of the call of Samuel. Samuel was the son that God gave Hannah after she prayed like a mad woman at Shiloh. The story of the call of Samuel has well-defined well boundaries. It began with a reference to Samuel as Naar. This term refers to a youth, a lad or an adolescent. Towards the end of the story, Samuel is referred to as Gedol, that is, as someone who is grown up. Before the revelation and the calling, Samuel was only a lad. After the revelation, Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to go unfulfilled. As a youth, Samuel didn't understand the divine calling. He thought it was Eli who was calling him. He was unable to distinguish the divine from the human voice. Eli, who understood quite well what was happening to young Samuel, guided him on how to respond to God. Eli came to understand that it was the Lord who was calling Samuel after the third time. So, on the fourth, following Eli's instruction, Samuel responded appropriately to God. Eli's action reveals someone who was cautious. He was cautious because one can easily be led astray by strange voices, presuming it was God's voice. When he ascertained that it was the Lord, he told young Samuel how to respond if the call should come again. This episode teaches us a lot of lessons concerning the divine calling. However, I would like to highlight three. One. When God chooses you, He will find a way to let you know, even if it means calling you repeatedly. Because Samuel was chosen, God never gave up on him, but was patient until Samuel understood. 2. God seeks our collaboration. Until we say yes to Him, God will not force us. As long as Samuel couldn't understand God and couldn't say, Speak, for your servant is listening, God did not force Samuel to carry his message. God respects our free will. If we say yes, he uses us. 3. God's call transforms. When we respond to God's call, we cease to be children and become adults. We cease to be little and become great. When Jeremiah complained that he was too young, God said, Do not say I am too young. Jeremiah 1 7. Responding to God's call, results in maturity. In our second reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he presents to us the expected behavior of those who follow God, as we see in the life of Samuel and the first disciples of Jesus. Paul draws our attention to the right use of the body, as he says, the body is not meant for immorality. It is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By this, St. Paul challenges us to the right use of our bodies as Christians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul makes a list of various vices, including sexual sins. 
Now he establishes his case against immoral behavior to which some members of the Corinthian church appear to be succumbing. In contrast to the philosophers who ignored the body, Paul emphasizes the sanctity of the human body with the climax of his argument that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and our bodies are members making up the body of Christ. The body, as well as its sexuality, is a divine gift to be used responsibly. In addressing the moral situation of the Corinthian church, Paul did not spare any courtesy. He called a spade a spade. He said, flee from immorality. I wonder what Paul would say to our generation, where moral decadence is being celebrated and immorality is fast becoming a culture. And those who should condemn it are making efforts to paint it pleasantly to gain popularity. In our world today, people are redesigning their bodies to make them more sexually appealing. St. Paul is speaking to our generation, reminding us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, let no one deceive you, and do not deceive yourself. Sexual immorality is wrong, even if everybody is doing it. It does not make it right. We are invited to shun immorality, difficult as it is. Of course, nothing good comes easily. Why must we shun immorality? St. Paul says, you are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. Christ has paid the price. So we belong to Christ and not ourselves. And the body is for Christ to belong to him and serve him. And Christ is for the body to inhabit and glorify it. We are all invited, dear friends, married and singles, clergy and religious, to use our bodies for the glory of God. Remember, our union with Christ affects not only our spiritual relationship with God, but also our relationship with one another. To get the context of our gospel today from John chapter 1, 35 to 42, we need to read from verse 29, where John the Baptist described Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He also described Jesus as the one to whom he has come to bear witness, who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and that Jesus is the Son of God. As he stood the next day and saw Jesus walking by, John said again to two of his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God. Why is this title, Lamb of God, important in the life and ministry of Jesus? The Lamb of God points to two realities. In the Old Testament, the Passover lamb and the lamb sacrificed by the priests as sin offering. On Passover night, God asked the people of Israel through Moses to take a lamb without blemish for the sacrifice. They were to sprinkle the blood on the doorposts of their houses so that the angel of death would pass over them. Exodus chapter 12. Jesus will offer his life on the cross as the Passover lamb. In the daily sacrifices in the temple, the lamb was sacrificed for atonement to take away the people's sins. If you read Leviticus chapter 1 verse 4 and Exodus chapter 29, 38 to 49, Jesus as the lamb of God will take away the sins of the world through his sacrifice on the cross. Once John the Baptist pointed out Jesus to his disciples as the Lamb of God, the two disciples followed Jesus. They wanted to encounter him directly, and Jesus asked what they were seeking. They asked Jesus, where are you staying? We want to know where you stay. And Jesus told them, come and you will see. They went, saw, and stayed with him the rest of the day. When we have an encounter with Jesus, we cannot just leave. We stay and spend time with him. Still, there was another effect on the two disciples. 
They could not hide or keep their experience to themselves. They went out to talk about it. Andrew went to his brother, and just as later Philip went to Nathaniel to say, we have found the Messiah. They have found the Christ, the anointed one of whom the prophets wrote. Andrew then brought Simon, his brother, to Jesus. When we encounter Jesus, we do his will, and his will is to bring people into his father's kingdom. That is precisely what Andrew did. Jesus saw Simon, and he calls Simon Kephas Rock, a name which will later define the ministry of Peter. Each of us is called to be a rock, people of solid faith who do the will of God in the world. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening, and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.